My name is Benardita Salato. I'm a tree fruit extension specialist at Washington State University. So first of all, the WO38 trials or cosmic uh, or in the cosmic apple trials, we've done most of them in the Rosa farm at Prosser. And these, you might know, it was planted in 2013 with the purpose of evaluating a pruning system, training system, and rootstocks. And so we have randomized two different rootstock, the M9 NIC29 and the G41. And we have three training systems, the spindle planted 12 by three, uh, by a, uh, vitrelli, sorry. And those are a double line uh, planted uh, 12 also by one and a half foot apart over the row. And we have the by which uh, is 10 by three. So it's a very neat place for us to do research because it's randomized in terms of the rootstocks and also it's one of the oldest blocks that we have uh, with uh, cosmic apples. So before I move on to all the results and trial, I need to uh, thank my research assistant, Juan Mungia. He is a former student at Oregon State University, and now he's my research assistant, and he's applying for doing a master with Washington State University, and he's been a tremendous help for all my, my trials. And I also, for the WO38 trials, we have a lot of support from growers and especially from Blyles that manage all the IPM and Burroughs tractor with Tyler that allows us to harvest the fruit like you see here in this bin. Okay, so the first trial I wanna talk about is a root growth difference between the M9, NIC29 and G41. This we did by placing uh, what we call the root windows in the ground for three replicated pear rootstocks. So we, this way we evaluate when the roots start growing and the period of growth and also overall growth between those two rootstocks. One thing that we've been monitoring with the root growth, of course, are the conditions in the soil and temperature, which is one of the most important for root growth, moisture, and we try to correlate that with the stage of development of the plants. So here you see the result from 2019, where uh, the roots start growing at this stage for G41, we have two peaks of growth. The first one started around May 3rd, and we had the bloom time pretty much at the same time that we had the first root tip. For M9 in 2019, it uh, had about two weeks delayed in terms of root growth, the first roots. So it, it was a little bit delayed compared to the G41 and did not show a second peak of growth during the fall. Now in 2020, this is the other line that you see here, the temperatures were not too different, especially at the beginning of the, the year, but we did observe that we got a, a bit warmer soil earlier compared to 2019. And what happened is that we see a little bit of a shift in the growth. So M9 actually start growing earlier under these conditions and earlier than G41 and both started growing a, kind of like a month after full bloom. And both rootstocks showed a second peak of growth in the fall uh, M9 was a little bit small, while G41 grow from around September to October, was still growing. Overall, what we conclude with this research, but also relying on data that we have uh, researched from other plants, even uh, cherries and apples, is that consistently there is a requirement, of course, of the stage of the plant, but also temperature is really important for first root growth, especially early in the spring. So we see that we require temperatures 
above 59 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 15 degrees Celsius for the first roots to grow. Now, what it means in terms of uh, vigor and, and, and the difference between these two rootstocks, uh, we observe here, this is the accumulated growth in this uh, line here. You have the accumulated growth in centimeters compared between the two rootstocks. And so you can see that in 2019, the M9 started, they both started pretty much the same time. They were no different between the two rootstocks. Uh, but then uh, M9 grew for about a month and they then stopped growing and stay kind of uh, the same. And actually there is a death of roots in this period. While the G41 had a much faster rate of growth, but also continued growing for more than a month. Uh, for uh, and this makes a big difference in terms of the volume of roots that we see active uh, for these two different rootstocks. Now I want to show this information because later I'm going to relate this to the green spot. And what I want to, to show here is that in this uh, 2019, in the V trellis, we had in these trees we had 14% green spot in the M9 NIC29 and 55% of green spot in the G41. I want you to remember this block is a very uh, fertile block in terms of we have high vigor, it's a silk loam soil, so it's not like a sandy soil, for example, that you, will, you might have in the Marua area or sunrise. In 2020, what we observe is that uh, M9 and G41, again, they were very similar in growth. Uh, this year, there was less growth overall, uh, similar M9 and in both years grew pretty much the same, but the G41 had a lesser growth in 2020. Uh, we've been working on managing the vigor in this variety in our, in, in our site. And the other thing that we observe is that even though M9 start growing earlier, faster, then the G41 kind of catch up on the growth and, and had a speed growth later in the summer and grew for longer period of time. And like I showed before, it also had a second peak of growth in October. The second year, we had a reduced level of green spot of 3% in M9 E29 in the V trellis and 10% in the uh, G41. The biggest difference between these two uh, rootstock is also uh, the crop load. And I cannot separate vigor with crop load. So for me, this is an indication of vigor. Uh, the M9 has less vigor and also in terms of shoot growth, but it has more crop load, bigger, uh, more fruit. And, and compared to the G41 that has more shoot growth and, and less crop load. Now, the size of each fruit are, had no difference, were not significantly different. So then we get to this uh, idea of thinking about the importance of vigor management and how that can lead to calcium related disorders or any kind of disorders like the one we I'm going to talk about later, uh, the green spot. And so what I want to show here is these three different systems. This is data collected from uh, different trees and the analysis, the statistical analysis is within systems. Everything involved is significantly different between the two rootstock, which is the only thing we have randomized in the block. So as you can see here, uh, the spindle system, which we have more vigor and more green spot shown uh, at the bottom here, uh, this one had uh, an estimated beans per acre of 56 and 45 for M9 and G41 respectively. And those also have very high levels of green spot, 29% for M9 and 45% for G41. 
Now, if we see and compare with the other systems that are less vigorous, we have also a different amount of uh, fruit per tree with G41 having less fruit, also more vigor, more shoot growth. Size are not different statistically and the green spot levels in M9 is reduced to 14% compared to 55 in G41. And then finally, the, the favorite for the Rosa block at least is the Biax, which is a less, absolutely a less vigorous system for us. And we, you can see that with the amount of fruit, we have more crop load in this system. And again, you can see a very uh, acceptable levels of, of green spot. This is a uh, green spot at harvest. So we collect all the fruit from the tree to evaluate these levels of green spots. So we had 1% for M9, N29, and 18% for G41. So this relates uh, the disorder with the fact that the vigor plays a very important role, but also there is a difference between, despite the, the system, there is a difference between the rootstocks. Uh, one of the questions I have for you for Bernardina, why do you, on comparing the root growth, the one year in 2019, you had the M9 was just in the spring, but not in the fall. And then the following year, you saw it in the spring and the fall. What are your thoughts on that? What might cause the difference? Yeah, so yeah, that's a good question. And I think that uh, no one really can answer that uh, with 100% certainty. Uh, there is a big variability on root growth depending on the soil conditions and the tree condition in general. So uh, one thing that we do know is that the M9, and I, I think I'm going to share that in another slide, maybe. Um, there was a work done kind of in the 50s that showed that the M9 is susceptible to high temperatures in the soil. So we think that maybe the, there were some effects on terms of the temperature and the stress conditions for M9 um, that sometimes you Kind of kill the roots and then you that triggers new growth later. Um, it is normal though, it's or at least what I've learned when I was in the university that it's more normal to have those two peaks of growth. Uh, and I will think that when you don't have adequate condition is where you don't see that second peak of growth. And that could be temperature, heat stress, water, uh, and, and nutrition also have shown to be an important factor for root growth. So you have lack of nitrogen or other nutrients in the soil, you also won't see that second uh, root growth. So um, again, if you have more questions and you want to reach out to us, uh, to me, you have my email contact there and also you can find me in WSU Tree Fruit Extension.